Rotating weight, does it matter? Now, one of the things you'll often hear within cycling, if you're considering you know, upgrading your wheels or your frame, is that you should prioritize getting lighter wheels because the wheels are rotating and therefore losing weight here is far more important. This is a piece of advice that's widely dispensed within the cycling community, but I wanna find out, is it actually true? Does rotating weight make more of a difference? And if so, how much more difference does it make? Well, to find out, I've decided to speak to Jean-Paul Ballard from Swiss side. You think, oh, the energy that you're putting into the system um, is lost if we've got, you know, if you're going to spin up this flywheel, but actually it's not lost. Um, you add more energy into the system, you've got more kinetic energy in the wheel. It's like a flywheel, you've got more energy stored. So the energy isn't lost. Where it yeah. does get lost, is when you jump on the brakes. As well as being the CEO and founder of Swiss Side, Jean-Paul spent over 14 years in Formula One as the lead engineer uh, on Formula One teams, including the Sauber F1 team. And then in 2014, he decided to redirect his passions and move into cycling and set up Swiss Side as he felt that there were bigger gains to be made by applying his knowledge and expertise into cycling. Now, ahead of speaking to Jean-Paul, I sent him some data files which could serve as examples uh, within this conversation about rotational weight that his team could analyze and also put into their complex simulation tools. So for a bit of context, these files were as follows. A climb, me riding up Sacalobra. There was also a file for a 40K time trial and a file for me riding a criterium. Here's what Jean-Paul had to say. Good to see you, JP. So firstly, the most basic question, does rotating weight matter? Really, really good question. And um, I think most people think, including myself, um, before we started digging, digging into this, we thought, yeah, absolutely, rotating weight's really important. Um, for me, intuitively, for a time trial, not important at all because you're not accelerating. But I thought, yeah, for a criterion, sure, you know, you're, you're slowing down, you're speeding up. Um, rotating weight's got to make a big difference. But in the big but, when you get into the physics and you actually look at it, um, actually what we've discovered is it makes pretty much no difference at all, um, which is a bit of a revelation was for me, was for us here when we first saw that. And um, yeah, it's only when you sort of dig a little bit deeper that you realize why it's not important. So I think first, can you, can you explain to us how much difference it does actually make then? Because you say it does make a difference, but it's not much. But what, what, what is the difference that you've calculated? Well, actually, we say that the, the rotating weight actually doesn't make any measurable difference at all. Um, now, of course, you've got to you've got to keep it in uh, um, you've got to keep it in, in context. You're talking about the difference between, um, say, a lightweight set of wheels and a heavier set set of wheels, and we're not talking huge differences. So, what we did for this discussion, um, we prepared uh, the difference between, let's say, we picked a lightweight wheel set and you know in that sense we pick the lightweight milestone um wheel set because it's sort of a reference that most people think yeah super light super stiff great and they are light they're like uh you know 1165 grams or something like that for a set and then what we did to compare that with is we said okay well the other end of the spectrum is let's take a, a good set of aero wheels um and so of course being from swiss side we took our uh, Swiss side had had run ultimate 625s, which is a 62 millimeter deep um, aero wheel set. And of course, they're a bit heavier. So they're 1600 grams difference. So, you know, you're talking about, let's say, roughly 400 grams difference between the two wheel sets. And so what we did is we said, OK, let's simulate those. Um, so we have some some really cool tools here at Swiss side, which enable us to, to, to do time simulations of any course with any rider. Uh, and really to quantify the various differences and we can do it step by step so we thought let's let's simulate the extremes and we got you to send us through some some real rider files which we can replay so to speak in our um simulation tool and so we picked a um we, where we thought yeah there's going to be little or no difference we picked a criterion where we thought yeah lots of accelerating and, and slowing down so it's going to be some bigger differences and then a climb where we say yeah, weight is more dominant um uh, what makes what makes the biggest difference and surprisingly mm. in all three of those scenarios 
um, we, we decoupled it. So we did, uh, we looked at only changing the inertia of the wheel as though it didn't get any heavier. So we did just the weight effect in terms of the, let's say, inline acceleration. Um, then we did the inertia effect as though we added more weight to the rotating part of the wheel. Um, then we added the aero effect and put it all together. Um, and what was really interesting is that mm. um, for those 400 grams difference that you have on those wheel sets, um, we measure with our simulation tool, no time difference due to the accelerations for that sort of delta of, of wheel. So the climb data, to give a bit of context for the audience, um, I chose Sacalobra because it's a climb I've ridden loads. It's kind of a climb that I've got personal goals attached to. But um, I, and, and it's familiar with a lot of the audience, but for those who aren't, it's 9.6 kilometers long or so. at an average of about 7%. Um, it does have some ramps in it that go up to about sort of 12% in places, but it's a fairly sort of consistent climb. But um, yeah, I mean, I would have thought that is, uh, you know, that, is, uh, you know, category one climb, rotating weight, if it's going to matter anywhere, I, I thought, right, well, it's, it, it's on a climb, you know, that's it's got to be the place. Um, so what, what, what was the difference that you, that you calculated? Good. So because there's no acceleration on the climb, so I think the key point to sort of make it clear to everyone, the rotating weight actually only comes into play when you're accelerating or decelerating, right? So if you're riding a constant speed, it's, there's no change in the inertia. Like there's a, there's, a, there's it's a constant, it's a constant in the equation. So sure, you're carrying the mass up um, the climb. That makes a difference. Um, and what we did see is that uh, with the lighter weight wheel set, wheel set on the um, Psycholabra climb, uh, you were actually potentially uh, four seconds faster um, up that climb with the 400 gram weight saving on the bike. Um, but that was before we took into account any wind. So, but we can maybe separate that out at the moment. This is on a basically a wind still day where you're basically, um, I mean, the, the data we had was still, the rider was going pretty fast. It was 18 kilometers per hour on the way up the hill. When we decouple just just the the rotation, the rotating mass, the inertia effect, because there's no change in acceleration, zero, as in zero difference. Um, so what we're seeing in that, the four second saving comes purely from the 400 grams of weight saving that you're not having to carry up the hill. So that's really interesting then, because people often do put a premium on rotating weight as like, that's a better place to spend your money if you're upgrading because the people would go, oh, well, that's rotating weight. So people would perhaps think that it, it's more valuable to save 200 grams on wheels than 200 grams on say a saddle um, or, or a frame or something. But you, what you're saying here is actually that people shouldn't be worried about that and it just save weight off the system and not be too worried about the rotating weight. Absolutely. So what, we, what we've seen, and we'll come to it when we come to the criterium uh, example, um, what, what we see, yeah, is that the, the total system weight and carrying that up a hill um, is dominant uh, in terms of the calculation. So in terms of the, the, the rotating, the acceleration, it's really second order. And we'll come to that with the criterion because you think, oh, the energy that you're putting into the system um, is lost if we've got, you know, if you're going to spin up this flywheel, but actually it's not lost. Um, you add more energy into the system, you've got more kinetic energy in the wheel. It's like a flywheel, you've got more energy stored. So the energy isn't lost. Where it yeah. does get lost is when you jump on the brakes. So actually the loss in energy that you're putting into the system comes when you hit the brakes. So um, we'll come to that now, maybe uh, when we look at the criterion in, in depth. So back on the, in the sort of rotating weight thing, when you're on the, when you're on the climb, there is this thing where you're saying you're not accelerating. Now, people will go um, in a race situation, you might have to accelerate to respond to attacks and stuff. I, I appreciate that might only be a couple of times on the climb. So I think this is where the criterium example really becomes a, a strong example because in a criterium, that kind of racing environment going into corners, you know, constantly attacking, constantly accelerating, lots of accelerations. If rotating weight then is going to matter, surely that's that's where you want the, the really light wheels. So do you? <laughs> <It's my No>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be honest, yeah. I was surprised by the results. And um, 
not just me, the other guys here in the team, we, we expected to see something. Um, and I mean, you literally see nothing. And so what we did is we dug into it. We, you know, we did some, uh, um, you know, there's some pretty heavy maths uh, in the back of our simulation tools. We, we picked it apart. We then did some, some, uh, some hand calculations as well. And actually it becomes, it becomes quite obvious um, when you get into it. So first of all, we've got to keep it in, keep it in mind, the criterion course that you sent us, um, the rider had an average speed of yeah, 52 kilometers an hour. Um, so it was a pretty, pretty fast, uh, pretty fast course. Um, and um, we've got to come back to this flywheel effect. If we say the energy that you're putting into the system, so if you do accelerate and you spin up these wheels, um, you, you add energy into the system and that energy is not lost. So you can imagine if you've got like you know, super heavy wheels, they will just carry you constantly. Once you've put the energy into the system, they'll carry up and over a hill and whatever. Um, but you only lose that energy when you hit the brakes. So what we did, we discovered that the energy lost is uh, in terms of the rotating weight is only during the braking phases because you're storing it like a flywheel when you're accelerating. Um, and so what we did is we analyzed what percentage of the ride is the braking phases. And actually you see, despite the fact that it's a criterion course where you're going around and around circles a lot, um, you're only braking 2% of the time. Um, so it's a relatively small amount of time of that total race. Um, and then, you know, when you consider again that the rotating weight effectively only plays a role um, during this 2% of the time, and we're talking about only a 400 gram difference between the two wheel sets, um, the effective difference is, um, is very small. And when you consider it over a total system weight of 77 kilos odd, um, we saw that the pure isolated inertia for rotating weight effect on that course was only 0.7 seconds um, over a one hour race. So over your one hour, by saving some weight in the rotating part of the wheel, you only save 0.7 seconds. But then of course, we look at the aero, um, the aero effect of this and, uh, and we see of course, you pay a little bit of a penalty with your aero wheel because it's got more material in it. It's, uh, it's a bit heavier, in this case, 400 grams heavier. But the pure aero characteristics um, and the savings you get through the aerodynamics were, uh, uh, well, in, in the case of the lightweight Milestein, with poor aerodynamics, that was a penalty of over 20 seconds. So through the lighter weight, it could bring you a, an inertia saving of 0.7 seconds. Um, but with the, uh, the aero effect, you gain 20 seconds. In the end, it's a no-brainer that, um, yeah, that you take the extra weight and have yeah. the aero um, uh, advantage. Yeah, that is, that's, that, I mean, that is really interesting to me as well. I think one of the things is you, it's weird though, because when you put a really light pair of wheels on your bike, it's, you can perceive it. Right, you can you feel it when you accelerate, when you ride up a steep hill, you, you can you feel well you feel like you can feel it. I think this the psychology of that must play into the minds of of riders when they choose their equipment. And I don't know what do you what do you think about that? You know what? Yeah, look, you you, you do feel it. You're right, and I think you you feel a couple of things. You also feel a difference in. Uh, I think there there are some aero effects there that you may or may not feel, but I think. You have to also think of it like one of the guys here said, um, think of it like oval chain rings. Now, when you have a super light wheel set, as you accelerate, it's going to spin up really quickly, but it's also going to spin down really quickly. So you've got this acceleration, but also a quick deceleration. When you have a heavier set of wheels, they're going to spin up less quickly, but they're also going to carry their speed more, like longer, right? So it's this sort of you're investing energy into a flywheel, a super light flywheel will spin up real quick, but it will spin down real quick as well. And so one of the guys was saying, oh, maybe you can think of it like a set of oval chain rings. You know, you have oval chain rings in a way so that when you're at the, when you have the maximum leverage with your, your, your legs, you're using that most efficiently. And when you're at the top of the stroke, when you're least efficient, it, it makes it feel a bit easier. Um, the heavier wheels can be seen a little bit like that mm. because they, you add energy into a system and it, and it keeps it rolling. Um, and there has been discussions, and we've had mm. you know, uh, discussions with various pro riders, that some people used to weight 
their disc rear wheels to actually make them heavier for certain courses where it's like a rolling course to help carry them over mm-hmm. over rollers, which was a really interesting concept. And I have to say, I never really understood the reason why I always thought, no, there's no way you would do that. Uh, it makes no sense. But if it helps you maintain your speed over these rollers, um, yeah, why not? Perhaps, you know, of course, if there's not too much height meter, you don't have to carry those that extra weight up a big hill. But in terms of inertia sense, it could well make a difference. Yeah, that's mad. And But then also, you know, you looked at the, the time trial, but we've kind of answered that, I guess, by in, in the time trial file I sent you, Again, it's it's making negligible difference because in a time trial you want to try and be more constant with your speed. You're not accelerating. Usually, time trials aren't uphill. This is a flat one, pretty much. Well, pretty flat. Um, you accelerate once, and, and again, then you're up to your speed. And then, in that sense, the rotational mass makes zero difference, apart from helping you go over hills. But you have no energy lost because you pretty much don't break. And in particular, in the course that uh, that you sent us, it was uh, it was a very quick flat course. So, what would you say the conclusions are? Yeah, I mean, the conclusions are, um, don't worry about the rotational mass of your wheels. I mean, that that really is the absolute clear uh, conclusion. And um, I can imagine that for a lot of people, they'll be thinking, no, this is not right. This can't be right. This, you know, Like you said, you can feel it. Um, but the truth is, you know, when you look at the physics and you break it down, actually, it doesn't make a difference. Um, and um, so what I would say is uh, we should challenge people to go out and try this. You know, take your, take your sort of aero wheels, um, which will be heavier than your lightweight wheels. Um, you know, they can be any lightweight wheels, you know. The answer is you will come out with a quicker time with the with the aero wheels. And coming back to the sailing effect, if we sort of mm. said, you know, what are the two take-homes from this? One is weight's been, especially the rotational weight is is, is actually negligible. Um, in terms of the, magnet, the types of differences, we're not talking about kilos of difference, we're talking about a few hundred grams, but nonetheless, a few hundred grams negligible in terms of the effective time but what comes out of this and i'm really not saying this because we're an aerodynamics brand but aero really is king of course you've got to take into account that if you're this is thinking this is simulating you know free stream conditions you're out there by yourself in a criterion you're going to be mixing in the bunch um so that's going to be watered down a bit for sure but in terms of a time trial you're out there on your own this is 100 percent you are going to gain massively more from the aero. So yeah, two big take homes. Don't worry about the rotational weight and do worry about aero. Thanks. Thanks so much for your time, JP. And uh, amazing insight. And I'm, I'm going to sort of, yeah, have a look at the the numbers again and, and just sort of try and wrap my head around it because it is, yeah, really, really fascinating stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for your time and um, stay safe. Yep. Thank you. Well, I found that incredibly interesting and I hope you did as well. One thing I have to stress is that this isn't a conclusion that JP is alone at arriving at. Every single other engineer I've spoken to has said the same thing. And as far back as 2001, a bike engineer called Craig Willett actually wrote an article on rotating weight. And he said, when evaluating wheel performance, wheel aerodynamics are the most important, distantly followed by wheel mass. Wheel inertia effects in all cases are so small that they're arguably insignificant. I mean, there you go. I mean, one caveat to this is that we are talking within the context of cycling and the typical wheel sort of weight that you can expect, which ranges usually from around one kilogram to two kilograms for a set of wheels. But within that range and the range that you can typically expect a cyclist human being to weigh, it's insignificant. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it, you know, useful and informative. I found it fascinating and I love, you know, going into detail and this the sciencey stuff within cycling. So if you like this kind of stuff as well, then, you know, help support the video and give us a thumbs up and, and comment and all the rest of it. And I have a request for you, right? If you know anyone who said to you rotating weight matters more uh, than other weight on your bike, then you know what to do. Share this video with them and then you can laugh at them. <laughs> that would be great and I'll see you next time. <laughs>